Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you especially to all the patrons who help support the creation and production of this daily podcast with their help at patreon.com slash SW7x7. So we started off the conversation with Jeremy Thorpe in yesterday's podcast. Jeremy is, just to give you the refresher, a fan of Star Wars since he was five years old in 1977. He waited in line in the rain overnight to get tickets to The Phantom Menace in 1999. He has worked as a physicist, a writer, and a projectionist, and he's now an editor with a small academic press living in Watertown, Massachusetts with his wife Kendra and Kat Guskas. And as I mentioned yesterday, he came to my attention because I'm going to follow him on Twitter. He's always talking about some very interesting Star Wars stuff. I like the things that he has to say, but in particular, the thing that caught my eye is him deciding to catalog Star Wars music, and not just any Star Wars music, but the music that you actually hear within Star Wars storytelling, like, you know, the Cantina Band in the original Star Wars, that would be a prime example, or the music that we hear in Maz's Castle in The Force Awakens, that's another great movie example. But these examples appear in live action series storytelling, in animation, in video games, there's a lot of it. And so, yeah, music for me is something that I'm super impressed with with Star Wars, and it's also something that I, you know, don't feel as comfortable talking about out you know, authoritatively, basically. So anybody who does something like this, it really catches my attention. And so I was very grateful when I reached out to Jeremy and he said yes to a conversation about this incredible work that he's done. So today I'm sharing with you the second part of my conversation with him. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. There are not quite 200 tracks on this list. Is that correct? I think it's over, just over 200 now. Oh, I, just, now I just finished watching uh, Young Jedi Adventures and I got some some more tracks from there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is going to be an ever-evolving project for you at this oh, yeah. point. Oh Absolutely. my goodness. All right, so now we're over 200. And you had said, I think, in one of your on one of your social media posts that you have a playlist that has most, if not all of them, mm-hmm. correct? I do, yep, mm-hmm. uh, on uh, YouTube. And, and I didn't post any of these this music to YouTube. This is just all stuff that other people have found that I've pulled together into a playlist of about 160, I think, songs. Got it. And for everybody listening and watching, I will post the links for that at the blog post for this show's episode at sw7x7.com and in the show notes as well, both for the YouTube playlist and also for it's in a Google spreadsheet, I think, right, is the actual full list. I created mm-hmm. a bit.ly for that just for this podcast. Oh, you did? So That's I awesome. Did. <laughs> so you can go to bit.ly slash Star Wars Source. That's capital S, capital W, capital S, Star Wars Source. Fantastic. All right. So you've spent so much time with it. What would you say is your favorite, I'll say popular piece of diegetic music? I guess I would define it as like, you know, the the Cantina Band stuff. You know, would be comparatively popular, um, for example, or maybe the um, uh, the songs that Lin Manuel Miranda and J.J. Abrams created for The Force Awakens. Like, it seems like those are sort of the well known things. Like, mm-hmm. what you know, what do you think is you know one of the best popular pieces? Well, does uh, does Andor count as popular? I, uh, <laughs> you know what, it's certainly popular within my heart. So, oh, yeah, um, I have a. Uh, are you go well? I'll let you tell because I I have a guess. <laughs> okay, because but... the 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 final episode of the first season of Andor, they have the marching band, and it absolutely just gets me in the feels every time I I hear that. Uh, it comes up on my playlist, and I just sort of stop everything that I'm doing. It's so beautiful, um, and it's the only only diegetic music I've found that's also production music, meaning it was played actually played on the set for the actors to hear. Um, oh. So all of the people reacting to it are actually reacting to the, those musicians that we see actually playing their music. And it's uh, just so, it's beautiful, it's moving, it fits the scene perfectly, it fits the emotion, and I, I just love it. It's called uh, Forming Up slash Unto Stone We Are by Nicholas Bertel. All right. Um, not the one I was necessarily expecting, but I was probably also going for the Niamos, the obvious one, but like... Um, but that being said, like you just lit me up with chills when you were talking about it, because like, I know exactly what, you know, like I have it in my head or at least snippets of it where, you know, I have that immediate 
visceral reaction and gosh that is just one of the the brilliant things about star wars is that the music is so good it can really do that to you like at the drop of a hat absolutely oh goodness so um <laughs> You just added another wrinkle to this whole situation by mentioning production music. And so this that is comparatively rare, like that they, you know, almost yeah. never are actually playing music on set for people to be experiencing. Well, the the composing the music usually is very late in the process because you want to get everything locked down, all the the everything that's happening in the picture locked down before you start putting music over it. Mm -hmm. Um so in but in this case, they really wanted to be able to play that on set. So they they uh, got the composer and Nicholas Bertel involved very early, uh, and they worked on it while they were doing the script writing stage, um, so that they would be able to give the music to the musicians and have them rehearse. Uh, so it was really a unique unique fusion. I think the only other example of production music is um, in uh, Ewoks: The Battle for Endor. No, no, the the, the other one, uh, the sequel. Uh, Caravan of Courage. Uh, Caravan of Courage. That's the one. Yeah. Um, when um, uh, Sindel sings "My Star," uh, which is a little lullaby that she sings, and that she actually does that on on state on camera. But that's the only other example. Oh my gosh, this is like this is deep level trivia stuff too. Oh my <laughs> that's gosh, me. This, this is so awesome. All right, so what would you say is sort of a a, a sleeper kind of hit? song or a bit of music that you know maybe not a lot of people know about you know me so it's definitely a little more obscure but you think is like really kind of remarkable mm -hmm. uh you can uh so of the things you can get on apple music or whatever there's a song from rebels called zeb rock which is uh you know uh, zeb is like looking over the sunset on on the planet and it's just this sort of 70s van music with an alien chorus going on in the background Absolutely fantastic. I've listened to a whole album of that. Uh, if I, uh, I think it's uh, Kevin Kiner, I think did that. And I just absolutely loved it. Ah, all right. I will absolutely be digging that up then too. Um, are those things, do you happen to know? I'm like, I'm, this seems like such a silly question. Do you happen to know? Uh, I know <laughs> Rebels soundtracks have been released uh and are mm -hmm. available in places like apple music and spotify and whatnot but is diegetic music often found in these sort of official soundtrack releases too it is yeah they are um and especially recently recently they've really been getting into just releasing all of the all of the deep cuts uh which is great um so after the um uh, galaxy's edge all of the stuff from Oga's Cantina, that's all been released, all those tracks, all of the stuff from the failed Galactic Star Cruiser has been released. Um, oh, okay. You know, all, mm -hmm. all of the, the stuff sung by Gaia, the Twi'lek. And uh, every, they've been doing like every quarter of a season of uh, Mandalorian or or whatever, whatever show is, they'll release a set of soundtrack tracks. And mm -hmm. you can find them on uh, Apple Music or wherever you find your music these days. <laughs> so, um, do you have a uh, um, a particular in universe era uh, favorite in terms of Star Wars music? That is a really good question. Uh, there was a long time where you know, this was back when they were doing like the Old Republic uh, video game and things, uh, where. They were they were saying they were everybody was doing Star Wars music was saying, well we know what Star Wars music sounds like it sounds like, kind of Benny Goodman big band music, so that's what it should sound like. So for a long time it was really locked into that, uh, sort of pattern and and you know they would say, well we know what language they speak in Star Wars music it's always Hutties so let's have a <laughs> Hutties lyrics going on, and I think recently um, with, uh, with the sequel era and also with the um, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor video games, they have really uh, started bringing in some big names to record music. Um, and they've really been doing some interesting and uh, unusual instrumentations, orchestrations, really interesting sounds. Um, they've been getting a lot more experimental, experimental with it, which I like. That uh, is so, cool. Yeah. So um, would Lin-Manuel... 
uh, listen to me, Lin Manuel Miranda. Miranda. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so, would that be an example from sequel era yes. of these outside influences? Absolutely. They did uh, two songs. Uh, him and J.J. Abrams together are known as Shag Kava, is their in universe band name. And they did uh, two songs for The Force Awakens, one of which has been officially released, and then another song for uh, The Rise of Skywalker, which has not been officially released. Gotcha. And then for the Jedi games, um, can you tell me a little bit more about um, who they brought in and you know what they did yeah. for those? So there's a there's a band called the Who, uh, H U, who are. Oh who no! Are <laughs> you had me for a minute <laughs> nice. there. <laughs> You're no, I I honestly did not realize I just did that. Uh, they are <laughs> they are, uh, and they they anyway the Who H U, uh, will not be fooled again. <laughs> um, they, they do <laughs> they do Mongolian throat singing uh, and sort of a hard rock with Mongolian throat singing. Uh, oh, they brought them okay. for the first game to do one track and then for the second game they did I think four tracks or something like that. Uh, uh, and then there's a there's a Turkish band based out of Amsterdam called Altin Goon who are fantastic. They do uh, like Turkish psychedelia. They're really great and they got them to do a few tracks for the the second game as well and and the, that whole soundtrack is available so you can uh, go right now onto itunes and, and buy it it's uh, it's all good stuff and i think the survivor people just won a grammy award for like best video game soundtrack too actually so actually i'm not surprised yeah so <laughs> it yeah it sounds like it was very well deserved mm -hmm. so jeremy thorpe i'm just i'm so excited that you took the time out to talk with me about this and to share your love of diegetic music in star wars and this is again just such an amazing resource you've created and i'm really excited for people to you know check out the playlist on youtube to check out the the whole spreadsheet and see everything about it um and yeah if people want to you know stay up to date with you as you add more things to this uh where can they follow you or keep up with you uh i am j-e-r-e-7-m-y the seven is silent uh pretty much <laughs> everywhere on the internet since 1990 so you can find me on twitter you can find me on instagram blue sky Flickr, uh youtube i'm j-e-r-e-7-m-y Excellent. Jeremy, thank you again so much for your time and for a brilliant bit of inspiration that you followed through like so incredibly well. I'm, I'm really grateful for it and I'm so happy to talk with you today. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. And that wraps up my conversation with Jeremy Thorpe and the links for the playlist that he has created in YouTube and to the spreadsheet that he created with the entire list of music and he's updating it actively now. That will be linked in the blog post for this show's episode at sw7x7.com and in the show notes as well. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the podcast. If you want to support a daily dose of Star Wars joy like this, you can do it very simply with a rating or a view or a like or a follow or a join or a share with friends and people you know online or in real life and you can also do it for just a dollar a month at minimum with your support at patreon.com slash sw7x7 and thank you for joining me for this and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be by seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.